Hey folks, this is going to be a continuation of the basic Lua NeoVim configuration that I started last time. If you go to codevian.github.io, you can navigate to this and see what we covered during the last time, uh, during the last video as well. So we set up some basic configuration, we set up some key maps, we added basic package management um, in VimWiki with a little bit more configuration, and finally we were able to reorganize the files into, into subfiles. So let's take a look at where we were last time, where we left off. So if you navigate to the init.lua file where we left off, we were able to split our configuration into three separate subfiles. So we had a file with key bindings, we had our packages, and we had some other configuration. One thing that you'll notice is that it actually changed the BO into OPT, and this works for most configurations, and you don't have to worry about uh, whether it's the buffer or the window or the global configuration. Um, so you can usually just replace it with bim.opt, and that should work for most things. Um, for some other things, it actually doesn't work. So if I try to do vim.opt.colors underscore name, um, it'll complain that there's no such thing. It's not a valid option. And what we can do in this case is just replace it with the vim command, honestly. Um, colors underscore name is kind of weird. We all just set our vim configuration using color scheme. So I can just do vim.cmd, and I can just do color scheme Molokai. And I can replace that, and when I launch Vim again, you'll notice that the color scheme is now working. Now, one thing you'll have noticed is that I'm able to navigate to these files by just doing GF and then Control O to go back. So, how am I able to do that? That's not available. That doesn't work by default. So, as an example, if you have a file here, so if I do config um, nvim, uh, let's try something else. Let's do tmx config. And if I do gf, okay, it says it can't find this file. Actually, I don't have tmx configuration here. So I do rofi slash config. I can navigate to that configuration for my rofi configuration. And if I have some neovim um, lua slash config dot lua, I can do gf on that, and that works fine for me to be able to navigate to that file. But by default, it won't work on these required things because it doesn't really know how to expand that into a file path. And we can actually help it along. And the way I've done it is to specify in the NeoVim configuration uh, after file type plugin for Lua, I set some configuration file where I've said the fact that I'm prepending the .lua extension means that in any folder that I am, if I have a file, if I'm if I'm in a Lua file, I can just do gf and it'll go to that file name .lua if it exists in that in that folder, or if it exists in that uh, the config folder for uh, Lua itself. Cool. So that works well, and it's a, it allows us to basically be able to navigate to these with gf and allows us to go back. Now, I usually use the same NeoVim configuration across my different systems and operating systems, and I found that I have to sometimes customize it based off of uh, the operating system I'm in. And what I usually actually do is I, I just store my NeoVim configuration folder inside Dropbox itself, and then I create a symbolic link to it. So, um, so what I'll usually do is something like sudo ln-s and my dropbox.files and then and I want the Lua, Lua based NeoVim configuration and I'll just do dot config and then and that's it for me. Um, but again in this case uh, I do want to be able to specify different configurations and one way we can determine what the operating system is is by using this function called vim.loop.os underscore uname dot sysname and in Linux systems, this will print Linux, and in macOS systems, which is the other system that I use, or it will print Darwin, essentially. So if I want to specify a different configuration, I can do if, um, in this case, bin dot loop dot os uname dot sysname equals, in this case, Linux, then and if I load this again, you'll notice that it's still loading the configuration because it actually includes my color scheme as well. Um, but if I do something like not equal to Linux, the next time I load this, you'll notice that the color scheme is now not loaded. So this does work uh, with setting configuration files, and 
you can actually even set these inside your uh, packages as well. So I've noticed that you can actually add custom code here because this is essentially a Lua function. So I can just do add conditionals here inside my Packer configuration and specify different use functions depending on the OS name that exists itself. So that's quite a useful tool to have. Now, one final thing I'll talk about is Alpha NeoVim, which is essentially a Startify replacement, which I used to use for my Vim configuration, but this is Lua based. And it has basically two versions. Um, you can give it a Startify-like theme, or you can give it more of a, an Emacs-like dashboard, essentially. Um, it's supposed to be fast. It's Lua-based, so um, let's add it to our configuration. So we just go to here. We can copy it, and we can go to our packages, and we can just add it at the end. And the next time we launch it, we can do Hacker Sync and this will install it for us. And now if I launch NeoVim, you'll notice that it's using this Startify thing. So it has essentially a folder for a new file. So it essentially has a new file, shortcut, a quit shortcut, and most recently used and most recently used inside the same folder, quite similar to Startify. Um, one thing I do like to have is a shortcut to my NeoVim configuration because of the amount of times I'm actually opening and closing it. So, so in this case, what I can do is inside the configuration for this alpha plugin, where right now it just sets it up and calls the setup method, we can add extra stuff. So we can pull in the configuration. Um, we can set custom buttons here. So I've set an E button, which is essentially the, the start insert, and I've set a V button, which will open up my NeoVim configuration and a Q for quit as the next time I open Vim, you'll notice that I have to Packer sync it because it's part of the Packer configuration. So let's reopen it. All right, now you'll notice that there's custom configuration here. So there's an E, V, Q, uh, E is probably duplicated here, so we probably don't need to add it, but I can just do V and I can go here. So. Now, one other thing I don't like is that I have to restart Vim in order to call alpha, or I can actually just call it from here um, by typing in the command for alpha. Uh, but, but I want to set up a key map here so that it opens up with control N instead. And I can just do that by calling vim.api and vim set key map, or if you've remapped it to a different um, function name, um, you can do that. So it's a normal mode key map, and I want to do c-n. Control N, we'll call it, and I want to call alpha CR, and finally, in the operation I want in the remap equals true. So next time, I need to do Packer Sync again. So next time, when I open it and I'm in somewhere, I can do Control N to go back. So I'm in the file, I can just do Control N to go open up my Startify thing. So it's just a key map for the alpha configuration. But the cool part here is the fact that I'm able to just set it next to the thing that I need to set it. So it's part of the configuration for this alpha plugin. I can set the key maps here as I, as needed for each of them. So anyways, this was a quick video to get my feet wet again with making videos again. Um, I'm happy to be back. I'll be making a lot more videos. So uh, feel free to comment with your ideas about what you guys want to see. Um, thank you again. Please like and subscribe.